Hey guys, Boris last week from BK. Great to be with you. Another really, really great week of trading for all of us. Uh, made some nice money in BK. We had some good calendar calls. And I got back from London and got very busy going back to scalping. And I want to spend the whole uh, lesson today really talking about my scalping experience this week because I think one of the key things I want to communicate is just how much of an art rather than science scalping is where you really have to use a lot of different components whenever you're trading uh, on a very short-term basis. So I'm going to start Wednesday night, Euro dollar. This is around 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, European session starts. I start my first scalp basically looking for my run to the OO. Euro looks a little weak. We, tr we cross the uh, 20 zone. I get short off the run to the OO. And this is what happens, actually. It's kind of very interesting um, in short-term trading that... I think you really have to uh, have the right me mental attitude in order to be able to be succeed in this game. So we get to like, I'm, I'm short around, I think around 15. We get to about 01, 02, and the thing just stops and starts to stall. At this point, I decide, okay, I'm going to go to 15. I'm going to go to my original entry as my stop protection because I don't want to lose any money on the trade. If it, if it comes in, it comes in. If it doesn't retrace, at least I've, I've, I've uh, sort of um, protected myself. All right, great. It goes back. It, of course, it retraces me right back out. So I'm now net zero on the position. And then the price starts to move back down. And at this point, I'm like, hey, if it's going to break 3,600, it's going to break further. I'm going to get down it on the break of the 3,600. So instead of getting mad at being stopped out or even, I simply adjusted my whole strategy and got short on the break of the OO for a much shorter target because I said if it's going to break the OO, maybe it's going to be good for five, six, seven points, which is exactly what it was. And I took the uh, the first scalp there. Then everything started to turn around. We had the Greek um, government auction go off relatively well. It was a 10-year that went off that night. And the moment I heard that, I got long um, long the euro. And I got long the euro, made my, my 15, 20 points off the news. And then I said, okay, this looks like it could be positive news. We're going to try to trade the session breakout off the news. Here's a perfect example where the news was early. This wasn't, I guess, market's time yet to break the session breakout. And, of course, I got in there, and um, it stopped me out because the market just wasn't ready to, uh, to trade. Next, we move into the uh, 6 o'clock zone. And this is a perfect example of what I want to communicate what not to do. So do as I say, not as I do in this particular case. I come back to the desk now. I'm, 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 I left my house. I go back to the desk in the office. And I'm, of course, a little bit late. What happens here is I get to the desk of the office. I see that uh, John, uh, that actually, I forget which one of the uh, um, ministers, somebody said that they're not going to, one of the German finance ministers said they're not going to support the euro, that, that the Friday meeting between Germany and Greece is not going to be any kind of rescue package. And I'm thinking, wow, this is really negative news. I want to get short the position. But the news had already been released for one, this is a 15-minute bar, for one, two, three periods. And I get short late into relatively um, strong support. And, of course, I get stopped out. It's a perfect example where if you don't have the right time, if you are late to the game, you're going to get burnt. It sort of goes to the old idea that if you're playing poker and you don't know who the sucker is at the table, you are the sucker. So that's my inventions in Euro for that time being. Let me, take a, let me just turn your attention to the pound that night which was also pretty aggressive uh, trading. So the pound that night, I had gotten short. Um, what happened was I was very negative pound that whole, uh, the whole front of the week because the data on the UK was very, very negative. And I thought, you know, there's no way this um, uh, situation in the UK is going to be positive for the pound. And I just kept shorting it off the tops. This was the first short, actually. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night. BRC numbers, no, consumer confidence numbers were very strong. The pound had spiked up way above uh, its early levels. And I said, this is bogus. It's not going to last. I'm going to get short here with a stop above here. Went back to sleep. And of course, when I woke up about an hour and a half later, the pound had weakened. And I said, okay, I'm going to cover my short because I really, um, it really wasn't, it was an Asian session trade. It wasn't really my, my great trade. Then I go into um, basically trading around the 150 level because here I see they're going to move it to 150. I'm going to get short the 150 on a break and it's short and on 150 on a break again. Then here's where it gets interesting. They get um, 150 level holds, and I start scalping actually against the position because my attitude is if they're going to hold underneath 1480 and they're not going to take it any further, they're going to probably run it back up to 150. 
Again, playing around with my, with my round numbers, except in the opposite direction than what I usually do, um, all around the pound. Now, this, all this is, is relatively successful. Then we come to the actual event. The event that night is the IS, PMI uh, services number. And although everybody is looking for a very cold number, it actually comes out much better than expected. And this completely changes my whole mindset on the pound because now I'm saying, hey, the economic data, which is supposed to be much worse, is actually much better. Now I want to have a long bias on a pound and be a buyer on any opportunity I can. So I get long um, initially off the break. I'm, I'm, I uh, make my profits over here. Then, as you notice, instead of uh, trying to short the position on the retraces, I get long in the position on the retraces and come back out of the position. Uh, about an hour later because now my whole mindset and the whole mindset of the market is completely changed and that's the critical thing I kind of want to communicate here the reason why I'm successful in the pound isn't because I have sort of you know incredible great insight into what's going to happen next it's because I'm trading with the flow first I'm negative because I know the market is negative so far then news comes out that completely changes the market's dynamics and I get positive and I get positive with the news and try to trade in that direction but having said all this Let's get into my yen trades, which are kind of interesting, because then uh, we have the ISM services number come out, which is positive, and I get long yen here, but this is where it gets really, really interesting. The uh, data is positive, but yen is not responding. This is 15-minute chart, so notice that, no, excuse me, I'm sorry, back up. This isn't even ISM. This is, this is um, ADP. ADP number is actually much better than the market thinks. Uh, it's basically bullish, which pretty much forecasts why the NFP was going to be bullish uh, this, today, this Friday. But anyways, the NFP number comes out, and the yen is not responding. As you can see, it's actually just withering here on the vine, almost stopping me out. So on the rise into ISM, I noticed that this is very strong resistance for the yen at this point. This is 88.90. And I decide, you know what? I'm not going to wait for my 20-point um, target. If this cannot clear this resistance. I'm out of this trade because despite the fact that the positive news is good, the price action was not. And look what happens. I get out pretty much at the top of the move because the price action starts to collapse. Scalping is really an art of integrating news and price actions. It's watching both what happens on the screen and what happens on the chart. It's, it's what's happening on, the, um, uh, on your Dow Jones newsfeed and what's happening on the charts. And this kind of integration is critical to long-term success. I've already done a lot of uh, trades here, so I don't want to bore you with any more trades uh, that we did today. Um, let me just see. I mean, I'll, I'll show you one trade. Okay. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just, I have so many screens here up that I just want to make sure that I'm, okay. I'll show you this one last trade. This was the trade today, just to show you where timing is really very important. So here we have Today's NFP numbers. NFP numbers comes out much better than expected. I mean, it's negative, but the market was looking to minus 100, and it came out at minus 36. It's actually very bullish. I see this number. I get long the position the moment I can at around 80, 90, 100, because I feel that the market is definitely going to uh, start rallying. And sure enough, within 5 or 10 minutes, it rallies all the way up to 25. It retraces. I then, unfortunately, have to walk away from the screen because I was in meetings um, on the afternoon. But I would have been a buyer around this level because the news was positive. Just like in UK, the news was positive and the tone of the market had changed. Um, one interesting thing here, by the way, there are a couple of ways you could have traded this. You could have simply been a buyer on the retrace or if it broke the new highs, this was the session high over here, very bullish sign. As you can see, a, a buy here would have taken you all the way up for another 25 points. So the thing is, there is no guideline. I mean, there is no um, recipe for success here. There's only guidelines when you're doing scalping. Uh, when you're doing it, you have to integrate both the news flow and the chart points to make sure that you're in sync and you're managing your money as, 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 um, as well as possible. Here are the last screen I'm going to show you. Just to show you, yes, I did go crazy. Let me just scroll through all of this. See if you guys can see this. This is all the trades over the last um, three days. A huge amount of scalping. Bottom line is, if you can see all of this, uh, I can't even pull it out on my screen. There's so many trades here, I can't even pull the whole screen. Bottom line is, trust me on this, I did a little Excel spreadsheet. 125 points over the last.